What's happening, folks? How you doing? Chip Mitchell here, back with the Can-Am Riker 2022 900. This bad boy is something else. Uh, you know, it's been two weeks now. Been riding it, having a great time. I thought I'd just give you a little bit of an update on what have I learned uh, in riding this. Number one, uh, when you ride this, you know, when you're on this thing here, right? You generally think this is your width, right? Because you're riding it, it's like, you know, like a bike, like a two-wheel motorcycle or a bicycle, and you think this is where you're at. But the reality is these wheels here are wider than this, and, you know, you can be backing out sometimes, and, you know, you can hit the, 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 the side, the wheels there, if you don't realize that the width is much more than what's here between your legs. And so you got to understand that, when you're riding it, I I, uh, I didn't hit anything, but you could. And, you know, these things, they're plastic, uh, and they would break real easily. So be mindful uh, if you're new to the Riker when you first get it. Now, obviously, I'm not speaking to folks that have been riding forever. You know these things. But if you're just getting going on it, just know that, because that, that can cause some problems, you know, and it's a fender bender that really is quite unnecessary. Um so it, it's pretty cool. You know, what is the other thing? You know, I had originally ordered the 600, but uh, 900 came in and the person that had wanted it didn't want it anymore because it's still cold. So they said, hey, you can have it if you want it. So I took it. Now, what did I learn about the 900? So on the highway, you know, I've gotten on the highway a few times. It's been pretty awesome. And, you know, I'm not a fast rider. But I'm doing, you know, 60, 65 sometimes. And there have been times where, you know, there's a tractor trailer over here, a car here and there. And you feel a little, you know, you're low to the ground on this thing. And, you know, you're flying along. The wind is buffering, buffering you. And you can feel a little intimidated. But the cool thing is at 60 miles an hour or even 65, you hit this thing to get out of that predicament where you don't want to be boxed in because it's just not safe you hit this thing and boy boom, it just takes off the torque on here is incredible and you know now i don't know what the 600 uh what it feels like going from 60 to 70 i have no idea i haven't heard anyone complain about it but i do know this on the 900 what i can say is if you're considering it know this and when you're on the highway and you want to get out of trouble not that I was in any trouble, but when you want to just accelerate, um, this thing's got a lot of pull, a lot of torque. Now, the 600 may have just as much from 60 to 70. That, that, that may be. I, I, I can't speak no, no ill will against it because I've never ridden it on the highway. But this, I can tell you confidently, if you're concerned about whether or not you'll have power on the highway to get out of a situation, it can get you out. The other thing I learned about this thing is, you know, zero to 40, you are the man. <laughs> I'm telling you, zero to 40, maybe even 50 miles an hour. You are the man in the city driving around. I mean, you could be in uh, uh, traffic and you got just a little, little opening there, a little door to get through. You hit this throttle and bow, this thing is there. It's quick. The cool thing about this automatic is that it's always in the right gear. No matter what you do, it's always in the right gear. I, you know, years ago when I was a kid, I had a, a, a Honda MR50, I think it was, or a little dirt bike, and my cousin had uh, the Honda, uh, I don't know, 50, but his was an automatic, mine was a clutch. And with the clutch, it was quick. You know, you could get in the gear and go. They'd go the same speed, but I could get there quicker. His was an automatic, and so it... It was slower getting there because you all, it wasn't always in the right gear. But now, here it is, you know, some 40 years later, you've got these transmissions that are tuned precise, man. And no matter what happens, you, you are always in the right gear to accelerate or decelerate, which is really cool. So zero to 40 miles an hour on this bad boy, you are king. And I think that's probably the same in the 600 as well. I think they both... At that low ratio of gear, that gear ratio, these things are quick and fast, and they will get you there in a hurry. I, I, I've been pretty amazed at, at that. The other thing I realized is that you could be throttled up and, you know, 50, 55, 60 miles an hour. As soon as you let go of that throttle, 
it downshifts and begins to break via the gear shift. Now, usually when you got a stick and clutch, you know, you hit that, you, you're in fifth gear, you go to fourth or third, and it slows down, the, you know, with the gears. You don't need to brake. This automatically does it, and it does it quickly. So if you're riding and say somebody's waving at you, if you take this hand off the throttle, it's going to slow down really quick. It just drops really quick. Now, I know some people put a band inside here so that it slows down a little slower. You know, I, I don't, for me, it's not necessary because um, I, I just, I don't need it just now. Now, maybe further on down the road, I, I will need it, but boy, it, it really works well. One of the things I learned too in Philly is a lot of potholes. And, you know, so you're a three wheel, right? You're a triangle, right? And so if you put the pothole in the middle, guess what? It's going to hit that back tire. Uh, if you put the pothole over here, it's going to hit that tire. Likewise, on the other side. But I learned this from uh, Riker Rider. I believe her name is Beth. She had mentioned that if you line up the pothole with your knee, uh, you won't hit the front tires nor the rear. And that has actually been really good for the amount of potholes that we have in Philadelphia. This is Pothole Crater City, and uh, it's a bit of a pain to hit them all the time. But if you line up that knee over the pothole, You'll miss the two front, and you'll also miss that rear tire as well, if that's something you really, really care about. Uh, the other thing I learned is um, the uh, when you get to your destination, and if you're going to go inside, uh, what do you do with your helmet? So one of the things I did was uh, I just took, uh, you know, just a regular chain, no big deal. I take this, run it through the mask of my helmet, and tie it to... Uh, the suspension uh, there, and I'm I'm good to go. The the thing I didn't realize what to do is you know my registration is usually in that frunk, <laughs> and I'm like, well, man, if I go inside, this isn't locking. What do I do with my registration? I'm probably going to put it in my wallet. That way, um, it you know it just stays with me. But this isn't locking. I'm sure there's a locking mechanism for this. Um, but I don't know if that's worth it because if somebody wants to get in here, they're going to see that it's plastic. They just pop that thing and take whatever they want to take. So that, that's something to be mindful of. For me, it's not that big a deal because, I, you know, for me, riding this is just for fun, pleasure. It's not like I'm using it uh, to travel to work or what have you. It's just a thing where you get out on the weekend or whatever and go for a ride, enjoy the scenery, enjoy the thrill of it because it's got a lot of torque and, and do that. Um, so the other thing I did is I got rid of the RAM uh, cell phone holder because I have a uh, Android and I have a uh, I, I don't know what is Galaxy Nine something A B C D E F G <laughs> and the RAM where it clamps in when it vibrates it moves the clamp and it winds up hitting my power button turning it off or trying to turn it off or doing something like that you know. You know, if my son's waiting to come out, he can come on out. Uh, so I, I uh, so I upgraded my uh, phone holder to this. This one, uh, I got it off of Amazon. Uh, it's really, really quick and easy. It's very secure. It stays on there tight. There's a lot of vibration that happens on these uh, handlebars. Works really, really well. No big deal. And... Uh, so I upgraded to, I'll probably take the Ram and put it on my electric bike. Got an electric bike, I'll probably put it on that one. And that way that will work. Uh, other thing that's really cool is when you're riding, you know, on these foot pegs, you can put the heel, your heel on the foot pegs and kind of be like a lower, you know, like you're riding a Harley Davidson chopper or something like that. You know, if you really want to stretch your legs out. I'm 5'11 and a half and, uh, you know, I do that. And that's really cool on the highway when you're riding or on some scenic routes where you just see in the, the land and it's just beautiful. And that is really, really cool. Um, what else? The seat, you know, a lot of people talk about it's, uh, it's not the most comfortable. I haven't had that problem yet. Um, you know, for me, you know, well, I'm 240. So there's a lot of junk in the trunk. <laughs> so maybe that's it, but it feels pretty comfortable to me. This little, uh, lift here and sometimes you know for me I got some bad knees I got a lot of uh, football injuries uh, so I like to stretch my legs out you know 
that other comfort seat, there's a different one they make that's a little longer. That probably would be a better fit for me. But it's not because of my height. It's more my knees. I like to stretch them out, you know, with arthritis and things like that. But I'm not really, I don't think I'll do that because I want the one up. Uh, and you can't put it on. Not the comfort seat, but there's another seat that's a little longer and you can't use it. But I'm cool with what I have right now. It's very comfortable. And I'm not touring. Like, I'm not going out for, you know, some six-hour ride or 300 miles. I'm not doing that. So this works pretty good for me. Um, I, you know, but what can I say about this thing? You know, going around the city... It's it's incredible. I was I was driving up and down Broad Street in Philly, which is really cool at night, you know, doing that, and that's a lot of fun. And I was going up Market, making my way back, and all of a sudden I heard this dirt bike, pan, pan, pan. I was like, oh, these are some of the twelve o'clock boys, you know, Willie guys. So one guy pulled up, pulled in front of me. Another guy, then another guy, then four of them. They all lined up in front of me. I was like, wow. And then I'm like, okay, I'm out with the motorcycles. Yeah, boom, boom. And all of a sudden they wave on their friends. It had to be about a hundred motorcycles. I'm not making this up. At least a hundred motorcycles. They had quads. They were doing wheelies, and they all pull up in front. And I'm sitting there going, "I got my helmet on. I got my jackets, my pants. I got my boots. These guys are in shorts and tank tops. It ain't that warm." And so, and they're surrounding me, and then the light turns green, and they don't go. What they're doing is they're waving their buddies to come on up so they can all be together and catch up. And I'm sitting there going, do I beep? Do I, do I give them a little, little, little beep? And I'm thinking, no, I don't want to cause an issue here. Uh, but I'm not riding with them. Uh, so finally, they all get up there. It's tons of bikes everywhere. There's cars behind me. The gr light is green. And finally, they go. They're doing wheelies. And, and I'm sitting there going, well, wait, do I go? <laughs> Am I riding in the middle of them? I didn't know what to do. So I just ease out, and I'm riding. They're doing wheelies all around me, in front of me, on the side. They go in the other lane. I'm like, what in the world? <laughs> and here I am. I'm looking like Ricky Wrong because I got on all the gear and safety. Obviously, I'm not riding with them. But I'm, I'm going up Market Street, and I'm just sitting there saying to myself, this is absurd. But I was enjoying it. These guys were all at least in their late teens, early 20s. Here I am, this 55-year-old dude <laughs> riding his trike. And uh, I just thought that was really cool. That was a lot of fun on it. And, you know, and then finally I turned off. They kept going. Uh, <laughs> I think they were like good riddance to the slow guy. Uh, but it was fun, to say the least. Uh, Want to show you a bit of safety gear I got. Hold right tight. The Climb Airbag Fest. This thing is pretty cool, you know. What is it? Well, it's an airbag. And you put this on. You know, it's got a computer chip in it. And this computer chip calculates a thousand, runs an algorithm. It's making a thousand calculations every second. And what is it doing? Well, it's analyzing what you're doing, how you're riding, and if, in fact, an accident is imminent. It understands if you fall off, Boom! The bag goes boom! If someone rear ends you, boom! Comes up around your neck, your chest, your vital organs, your back, your spine. Look at my son. He's about to go to New York. <laughs> and, and so what do you do? You, this right here saves you <laughs> from any bodily injury from your core, your neck, your spine. It, it's just a great thing. Now, you may say, well, I'm not wearing that thing. Well, that may be true for you, and I'm cool with that. I'm new to riding, you know. When I was a kid, I rode, but that was dirt bikes. This is different. Now I got to deal with all these assassins out here in these two-ton vehicles. And for me, it's like I got to get used to riding first. I got to really acclimate myself and know all the different pitfalls that are out there and the challenges for someone else's negligence or stupidity or my own. And this helps to compensate for that. Obviously, your number one weapon against accidents is your brain. And if you're not thinking straight, you can get into a lot of trouble. But this helps me when my brain is a little slow and not thinking right. And, you know, I just got it because I'm like, you know, I don't know all the ins and outs of riding. And I want to be safe. So you put it on. Now I'm wearing this over top of my hoodie. 
you can put this right underneath your hoodie. It goes over my jacket. My jacket goes over it. It's just a vest, and it makes all these calculations and watches. There's an app for it for your phone. You don't really need it, uh, but if you want to look on your phone and see where the battery life is, the battery life, I think, is like well over 24 hours. Like it hasn't even come close to running out with me while I'm riding. And it monitors it. Uh, there is a subscription. It's $12 a month for the subscription. I think it's worth it. People say, oh, well, what happens if your subscription, you, you don't pay it? And okay, well, first of all, the first time they try and debit money out of your account and it ain't there, they will send you text messages, emails, and saying, hey, dude, fix your account. Why? Because they want their money. So I don't think that's going to happen. I think you'll be safe. Uh, you know, that's the bottom line. Now, you know, some will say, hey, you don't need an airbag. That, that's, that may be true. I don't know. Here's what I do know. There's not a car made in America that does not have an airbag. In addition to that, no one drives their car without a seatbelt right now. No one. You know, and are you safer in a car in an accident than on a bike? Yeah, you are. But yet it's mandatory in a vehicle car. So it just made sense to me. I'm not saying to everybody, there's no seatbelt on this thing. And, you know, I've been driving since I was, what, 16 and a half. I've had uh, maybe three car accidents, nothing severe. But the fender benders that I have had on a motorcycle, I definitely would have fallen off the bike, hit the ground. So for me, you know, it's worth it. I, I, I'm not saying it's, everyone should do it, but for me, it just works because I know this. I'm new to it. I'm new to driving a motorcycle on the uh, streets, so I, I just want to do what I can to be safe. My kids, they're grown, but they want me to be around just for a little while longer, so I'm going to do that. But if you have any questions about the climb, I got this from RevZilla.com, you know, um... That's where I got it from. I got an extra large. I'm 5'11 and a half, 240. 240, good gracious. Um, and I got the XL because I wanted it fitted, firm. It doesn't bother me. It's vented in the front, but it also adds as a layer, extra layer of warmth when you're riding out in the cold. So it works out well. You know, what can I tell you? Hey, this thing, if you're considering a uh, the Can-Am, I, I tell you, I have no regrets. There's nothing that uh, would make me go, man, that was stupid, or I shouldn't have got that. This thing is a lot of fun. It, uh, it's quick. It's nimble. The gas, I'm getting about 155 to 160 miles on the tank of gas. You know, I'm pretty happy with that. I think that's about 30 miles to a gallon. Um, that's not straight highway. I'm sure highway you'll get a little more, but I haven't uh, just done it straight highway. Um, it's a lot of fun. I don't have a shield yet. You know, right now, I don't think I'm going to get one just yet. I like the newness of not having a shield is kind of cool. I'm sure as I continue to ride, I'll be like, I got to get a shield. But right now, I'm holding off on it. Um, but if you're considering it, it's worth it. You know, a lot of guys got the cushions, uh, that foamy grips, because of the vibration. Mine doesn't vibrate that much yet. Now, I don't know if that's because I've got winter gloves and the winter gloves are thicker. So maybe that's why um, maybe in the summer, in the spring, when you're wearing uh, just a leather glove, the vibration is irritant and you want to get a thicker one. But I haven't done that yet. Haven't decided on the colors yet. You know, I went with the black just because I wasn't sure what I was going to be feeling down the road with colors. I may do something different. At some point with that, not sure just yet, but I tell you, man, this thing is a lot of fun. And if you're considering it, hey, I'm, I'm just having a blast with it right now. It's a lot of fun. Uh, I'm scooting around town. I'm not using it as a commuter for work, so I, I can't give you any insight on that. But for just having fun and going out on some days and riding, seeing the uh, landscape and so forth and in the city, this thing is a lot of fun. A lot of people want to talk to you about it. You pull up, they're, they're just intrigued. What is it? I'm thinking about it. Um, if you're not a motorcycle, two-wheel guy, uh, this is this is a great alternative. It, uh, it It's easier to handle. You focus on 
uh, things, less things than having a stick and clutch, uh, if you're not really uh, familiar with that. But I tell you, it's a lot of fun. And uh, if you have any questions, you know, hit me up. I can only tell you what my experience has been. I'm not a veteran. I'm speaking to the folks that are just getting into it and enjoying it. But boy, I tell you, it's a lot of fun. This Klein thing, boy, it's awesome. You can see the back there. That's where the computer chip is, and that thing is always working. Uh, you don't need the phone app uh, to run it, but it just lets you know what's going on in it and the battery life and so forth. But I'm having a blast on the Riker, baby. The Riker is awesome. And listen, you have a great one. Any questions, hit me up on uh, the comments. But have a great day and ride, but ride safely. Take care.